Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Hardscape Growth Show. I'm your host, Alex from TechoBlock, and today we have Mike from Creekside. Um, they're out in Illinois in Crown, uh, geez, what's it called? Crown Point. So it's, it's Crown technically, Point. It's, it's Indiana, but it's close enough that we, we call ourselves a Chicagoland company. Yeah, you're right on the border there. There's like Gary, Indiana, go south and a little bit west, and it's right there, Crown Point. Yeah. Uh, Mike, today we're going to talk a little bit about content because that's how I ended up reaching out to you. You've been pumping mm -hmm. out a lot of awesome content on uh, Instagram lately. Uh, but we're going to talk about that, not just from the perspective of creating cool content and whatever, but also from the perspective of as a business owner, why is this important to you? What impact is it having on your business? Mm -hmm. And what are the next steps from here in terms of building your business for the future? So there's lots to go on this journey together. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we start with just a little bit about who is Mike? What is Creekside? And why is it worth listening to this conversation right now? I love it, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, name is Mike Arnold, president of Creekside Outdoor Living. Uh, we are a design build firm, one of the best in our area, and that's bias or no bias. Um, <laughs> I uh, we we definitely market ourselves as a a high end outdoor living construction company. I I don't even like to utilize the word landscaping because it carries too many negative connotations of cutting grass, planting building. flowers. Yep. Nope, we're not necessarily here to plant little, you know, Sally's bushes down the street. We're here to to build a, a badass backyard uh, for you to vacation in instead of going to Hawaii, if that's what you choose. So what's the term that you just used there? Which one? You're I not think. landscapers. You are outdoor living construction experts, design and construction experts. Yeah. All right. So being one of the best in your area. One what of. Makes, there, there's what, a handful that are good. I, I, I said what I said what yeah. of. <laughs> How can you feel so confident saying that? Because I see a lot, a lot of the designs that other people are doing. I see a lot of the builds that other people are doing. I mean, I'm showing up to jobs that were done a year ago, less than a year ago, with people that are wanting us to rebuild something that somebody else built. So from the construction aspect. I can go to our job sites and go, holy smokes, those cuts are fire. Like those, that was sick. Like my guys are awesome. From a design mm -hmm. standpoint, I'm seeing stuff that is ahead of the curve in design. My designer is like fantastic. We've got a couple people on our design team. My lead designer, she is just a mastermind uh, with design, thinking creatively, uh, designing with, with use of space in mind. It's phenomenal. Awesome. Now, one of the ways that I was able to see that you guys do great work is through the content that you put on social media. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the content that you've been putting out there is you directly doing it. You're hosting it. You're taking people on a tour of the projects and you're pointing out some of those finer details. Like you're saying the details and the cuts, the details and the coping, the details and the curve and the symmetry and the decorative banding coming along and meeting at this one point, that kind of stuff that the average consumer is completely blind to until they understand what the difference is. Yeah. That's what I really appreciate about the content that you're doing because you're helping people craft their own evaluation criteria of what a good contractor and what a good project should be. Yes. Was that intentional from the beginning or is that something you kind of fell backwards into? I'd say a little bit of both because I've, I've come across, I'm always conversing with a client and it's not, the client doesn't know what they don't know. I mean, it's the same conversation as a uh, budget, right? You ask a client what their budget is. What's the common response? I don't know. And that's mm -hmm. proper because in, in context, I am the expert, not them. They are not in this industry. Uh, I am. So, and likewise, it's up to us also to highlight what is beauty, what is not beauty, um, what what is a clean cut, what is not a clean cut. You, I mean, I'll, I'll come across um, DIY projects that a client did, and they're like, "Do you see this thing over here that I did?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I want to rip it out." <laughs> and, <the thing> <laughs> out you know? and it like breaks their heart, but it's like they don't know what a, a proper aesthetic of an outdoor living space really is. Um, so I'm like, man, you know, we got to start instructing them. We got to start showing them 
what what is this supposed to look like? What does it look like for this thing this thing to actually flow right? Um, for these cuts to be you know symmetrical and all that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit of both. So sh shaping the the customer's evaluation criteria kind of plays them right into your hand in the end because you're saying these are all the things that great contractors do. Yes. You're seeing them all on my job site. Therefore, one plus one equals two. Yeah. You can call us. Yep. I am. I am doing I, I, one of two. Well, I'm doing a lot of things all at once. Number one, yes, I am. I am showing the client a potential client. I'm showing. I mean, yeah, the, uh, people have Instagram that are 12, and people have Instagram that are 60, and so yeah. I'm showing everybody in between what is a good, you know, outdoor living space. Um, but I am also establishing credibility for my brand. I'm establishing mm -hmm. credibility for my my speak. When you when you know that you go to Creekside's Instagram, um, you're going to get fed some really good content, not just pretty pictures, but some educational stuff too. Um, and it's what's also super beneficial is that most relationships, mo most trust in relationships are formed from one-on-one -on -one close proximity with another. Mm -hmm. Trust in this context is built on the back end. Before I even show up, they trust me. They're, that is hyper valuable. That is in, that there is no other greater value in my mind to creating content to then me showing up to a customer's site, them shaking my hand saying, you're Mike, before I can say I'm Mike yeah. and going, yeah. hey, this project that you did two months ago, remember that fire pit over there? I'm like, dude, I don't even remember that. And then you remember it. <laughs> Let me, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah right? up on, the, on the Instagram feed. Yeah, this one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, man, that that's absolutely just revolutionary. So, I'm, I'm smiling because uh, that's exactly the definition of expert positioning. Yes, that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're educating without any, you know, you're you're educating objectively, so to speak, mm -hmm. because you're just like this is what's good about this product. This is what's cool. These are yeah. things that a lot of people overlook, but they really matter because of X, Y, Z reasons. Yeah, you're establishing credibility for yourself, but in the process, you're positioning yourself as the expert, and in doing so, that earns a level of confidence, that earns a level of trust. Yeah. prior to anything happening. So right off the bat, you've differentiated yourself yep. based on that, that credibility, based on the expert positioning. Yep. Add to that some kick-ass designs like you guys do. And all of a sudden, now you have a, a, a nuance or a little flavor to that expert positioning. Like they do things well and they do things that look really nice. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is really a discovery and a conversation that you have with the client. Like yeah. you said, the budget is a perfect example. I don't know how much it costs. I'm not right. the expert. You are. Correct. But I trust the next things that's going to come out of your mouth because you just proved to me over the past two months of me stalking your Instagram that, you know, you guys seem to be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that you can do it in a number of ways, right? You can establish trust and credibility in a number of ways, one of which would be Tell of course, you show up with a portfolio with like you're scrolling through just pictures and stuff on your, mm -hmm. on your phone and that takes forever. Mm -hmm. um, but you gotta get there. What? You gotta get there. Well, like sure, you have yeah. to get in front of the client. Like that, you, that strategy works yeah. if you get in front of the client. But even when you do that, that still takes a ton of time because you're showing them, showing them, showing them. And okay, not only are they looking at the stuff that you're showing them, they are reading you. Like they are analyzing you as a person. Like you are, like I have to sell myself. I'm not just selling mm -hmm. my company. I have to sell myself that I'm a trustworthy, honest, honorable individual, not just my projects. So when I can do all that on the front end and not, I'm not just posting pictures, like I'm intentionally posting things with me speaking in it. I think that that's mm -hmm. really critical and crucial because you can tell a lot by people's body language. There's, there's a, I'm not going to name names, but there's a contractor in our area that people, I've had people constantly tell me that dude's creepy. Like the way that he, the way that he talks, the way that he showed up, um, the way that he was obsessed with your guys' work, it was really, <laughs> it was, it was really kind of creepy. They, they were taking cues from not just yeah. the work that he did, but who he was as a person. And I, I think yeah. that's super, super critical. I, I think uh, if I, if I may, I just want to build on another thing that you said though, uh, because yes, you have to sell yourself. Absolutely. You do. Even yeah. if you have the most amazing social media game in the world, you still have yeah. to sell yourself when you're in front of the client. But 
if a lot of the sales job has been done for you, like they're already excited to meet you, they've already expected you to be really good based on what you've shown, yeah. then you can focus more of your mental energy and your emotional energy on bonding with them and building a significant yeah. relationship yeah. instead of trying to prove yourself first, test out, I'm the best because of this, 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 this. Yeah. And you're not, you're not able to listen to them because yeah. you have to do all the talking. Yeah. So by being proactive on social media, giving a voice, giving a personality, giving an identity to your company that speaks to your customer, yeah. This allows you to walk into that situation that much closer to building a trusting, uh, respectful and confident relationship. Yeah. And I think that's that's the biggest key to that expert positioning is it's just it's the acceleration to the level of trust that is needed to take the next step, then the next step, then the next step. And we've talked about this. I forget on which episode, but we talked about building that trust and building that that sales relationship. And it really starts by just doing what you need, what you say you're going to do over and over and over and over. Yes. And yeah. If you can, if you can already start by doing that online. Yeah. With like, here's the space, here's the before, here's the design, here's the after, just like we said, awesome because of this, yeah. and you just, you build those little wins so yeah. that when you show up, there are just more little wins to go get. And then, then it's a slam dunk from there. I'm yeah. oversimplifying to a degree, but right. it's not that much more complicated than that. Yep. Totally After that, agree. it's just practice and experience. Absolutely. What, uh, what, what else? What else does it do for your business? Like you said, it it it, it has that effect mm -hmm. where it makes it the sales process that much easier. Has it had any other byproducts or? or... Yeah, I mean, there's a couple. So you know, you and I had talked a little bit briefly beforehand about you know how this you know questions about. Um, how does how does social media and what I do with that fit into personal and company mm -hmm. goals? Um, I, I think so. Can answer both of those. The company yep. side, um, I, I I love my people. Like I freaking love the guys that work for me uh, and the girls that work for me. Um, like they're they're super awesome. They're super kind. They're like family. They're like my second family. Like if I didn't if I didn't do this, I don't know what the heck else I would do. Uh, just because I do enjoy it so much. So like company wise, I want to. I want to make rock stars out of my guys. Like mm -hmm. I, I want them to look at the content that I'm producing as well and go, Oh my gosh, like, like I, we I, did look, that. I look good. Right. Like, and I, yes, yeah. and I created that. And yeah. I mean, there's, there's been times where people were, were referring to one of my guys by name because I said it a couple times in a video and I'm there like, you go. so freaking cool. Like we're making these, these guys a household name. That's how <laughs> cool. Right? So, you know, boosting morale in the company as well. So, um, uh, on, on a personal side, it's something that I, I enjoy. And I think that that's super huge. Like, yes, I'm the owner. I can be doing a lot of things, blah, blah, blah. But it is something that I personally enjoy to do. And I'm a big believer that, like, you should go and pursue the things that you are happiest in most, not just what's going to make the most money. Um, so and if you're happiest, you're going to uh, produce more for the company if you're in that sweet spot, that role. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? It pushes me to, to stay creative and stay innovative, um, all that kind of stuff. So, well, if you're happy, yeah. then you find the energy. If you're yeah. unhappy, you don't. So when you run out of gas, you're out of gas. When yeah. you're happy and you enjoy what you do, you're out of gas, but there's a little jerry can hanging around back that you can whip out and you'll get through it, you know? Yes. So that yeah. really matters on a personal level, you as, as the owner and president of the company, but even for the individuals on your team. Yeah. If, if they're happy and they feel recognized and they feel appreciated for what they do yeah. and they, they not only do they not only are they told they're contributing, but they see very tangibly the ways that they contribute. Yeah. Not just on the job, but then you're leveraging that content to kind of have almost like a highlight reel that you can replay for them when they're feeling down, you know, like almost like video coaching for for a sports team, you know, like yeah. th these are all little little byproducts from just telling the story of, of your business running every day, basically. Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's got, there's a lot of, uh, of direct effect type things. And then a lot of, of little byproducts, uh, it, man, it's so much work. Like the content production stuff, so much work. And sometimes I'm like pushing myself to, to do it, but, um, it is something that I, I think is worth it. Sometimes I'm like, I, I should be spending more time in the sales game or something else. Um, and, and sometimes I get a little lethargic with that. I mean, I, 
I haven't posted anything really. I think I posted one thing in the last week and I'm just like bogged down with things in the office, but you have to do that, right? You got to have a balancing act with that. So, but, uh, but tell me like right now, what you're telling me is kind of your, your gut is telling you like, ah, I gotta, I gotta do more content or ah, I should be spending more time on sales or ah, I gotta focus on this admin stuff. How do you know? Because we were we were talking about this earlier, you, you kind of like uh, upped your your social media content game a few months ago, mm-hmm. and and I noticed because you start showing up more often in my feed. I live nowhere near you, yeah. but obviously I follow the right hashtags, yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and you know obviously Instagram is also favoring video a lot more than static images right now oh, uh, as well. Yeah. This is very important for anybody. Like it, it's the middle of July right now, but that's the reality. July twenty twenty one, Instagram is favoring video over static, so uh, yeah. that's important to retain. But you're doing that. And it seems to be working because I noticed you a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, I keep an eye on these things for a living, literally. Yeah. But if you started doing it more and you've sustained that for several months, yeah. you strike me as a pretty smart guy. You must have seen something beyond just like, hey, I feel good and, and my team feels good. There had to be something else supporting that that decision to keep pushing ahead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was it? Yeah, well, so with social media and content production in general, pushing ahead more with that, I, I think that on my side of things, which is predominantly sales, right? I'm, I'm the one, I'm not designing things. I can't take credit for that as much as I'd mm-hmm. love to. Um, I am, I'm taking what is designed and I am delivering it to the client. I'm really the resource connector. Um, mm-hmm. So with what I have done a lot was I have to do a lot of follow up because you'd present something you wouldn't hear a call for you know however however long right so okay. I spent a lot of time on sales calls and sales follow up because we've all listened to Grant Cardone and you know you got to follow up follow up follow up 10x that thing baby yep. um, and I just grew so weary of that man I hated that I hated just constantly bugging people over and over desperate. Again. I had a spreadsheet of, I followed up with this guy. Okay, it's been a month for this guy. It's time for him to, I got to bug him now. Email, yep. phone call, text, whatever you got to do. Um, and what I started noticing is that I had to do that less when I created more content because I got more quality clients on the front end. So I don't care if you don't call me back. I have enough, like right now, I'm we're, we are so, man, we are so blessed. Like I cannot stress that term blessed enough because it's not... I, I do strictly believe that we are in a position of a blessing from God. It's not our doing. It is God opening doors for us. But besides the point, um, we are we are so blessed to be booking jobs for next year. And we were doing this like a, a month or so ago, maybe a little bit more yeah. than a month ago, yeah. um, where I don't really care if a client doesn't call me back or not because mm-hmm. I have of the right client who sought me out instead of me seeking them out. And, and they wanted to, to join forces here, right? So I think that was the metric. There wasn't necessarily a spreadsheet data graph type of KPI type yeah. of metric. Um, you don't start there. For for anyone who's like, you know, all these big businesses, they got dashboards, they got reports, they got KPIs. Like, no, it starts with this seems to be working. And yeah. if it works, if it works, if it seems to be working over enough time with enough consistency, then you start looking like what is actually doing it yes then for business for bigger more mature businesses they identify patterns and they're like okay this thing is kind of like that time we did that thing so let's try measuring these things yeah when you're just starting there's no metric that you just like oh yeah that's that's it track that and you'll know like no yeah. get, pay attention to your business that's how you know Absolutely. and what you just said totally makes sense Yep. But I and it came from a point where you didn't feel comfortable doing what you were doing anymore Oh, I hate your, 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 your I hate job it. was to bring in revenue for your company. Exactly. So that and means so that, that's a sign that things are, are, are not the way that they could be for your business. Yeah. You could do something differently. You could do something better. Oh, that's, that's, that's what I like about what you did. Entrepreneur. That's finding a way around something when it seems like it's not working, right? You yeah. come up against an obstacle and you find a damn solution. You don't go, this that's is the end of the road. Uh, I guess this was just what I, uh, I guess we'll pack it in here and no, uh, no. No. So that, that, that was that. And then we're, I mean, obviously we're always searching for some solution to something. 
Um, yeah. The, the solution for me was to spend the time, the endless hours, really, that I was that I was spending on these dumb sales follow-up calls on content. And I honestly, I don't think that I have done. No, I, I could say that I've done some sales follow-up calls this year, but I haven't spent days doing it. I haven't spent an hour doing it. It was like one or two. Um, yeah. And that feels awesome to me. I feel so much better about my existence than just sitting and being a robot on a freaking phone. No, that 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 is repetitive and unoriginal and uncreative. And I yeah. don't want to do those things. Yeah, and you don't you don't need to because you've created enough demand. Here's another thing, and I'm curious your your thoughts on it. Or actually, let me ask in the fr- form of a question. Yeah. What uh, what do you think that uh, most people have got wrong about social media and finding success on social media? Hmm. Social media specifically. Um, I think that you need to know your audience. Like there there are certain people, um, you know, a buddy of mine that I think of right off the bat, like his prime audience is uh, it is the consumer of these products but it's also the contractor and he's got you know a, a massive following of a lot of mm-hmm. contractors and he's always like he is he is so much more like hands on in the game um, creating building new tools than I am I'm I'm not I like to go to the field to you know talk with the guys hang out with them eat some lunch with them but you know take some pics but I I'm not out there building it's not my greatest strength and it's not my greatest passion for him it is um, so I, I build content online around the things that I am best at, the things that mm-hmm. I am most happiest with, and and people see passion, people are attracted to passion. Versus him, if he was doing specifically the stuff that I'm doing, it may not come out right. If I was doing the specific right. things that he's doing, it wouldn't come out right. So yeah. I yeah, think there's an authenticity, which is a word that gets overused, but there there's some truth there, and I don't have a better word. Like the real authenticity, not false authenticity. Well, an authenticity is going to come from the hybrid, the breeding point of what you're you're happiest with, what you're most passionate about, and who your client is, who your audience is. If you know those Mm -hmm. things and you are decisively performing actions that go in that direction, Mm -hmm. you're you're a winner. That's a that's a perfect answer. Thank you. Ding ding. (laughs) (laughs) The uh, the only the only other thing I would add to that. On the topic of audience is uh, geography. There's ah. a lot of people, they, they look at their Instagram following or Facebook or Twitter or what, whatever, mm-hmm. and they think like, oh, well, to have success, like I only have a couple thousand followers. That's that's not good enough. Well, right. hold on. Uh, how many do you need? Uh, how many homeowners fit your profile in your service area? Yep. Is it 5,000? Is it 10,000? Is it a million? Because, and, how, you know, and how many of those 10,000 actually will have social media? So when you look at it in a ratio, you might be in your sweet spot right now. That's it. You don't, you don't, the number is irrelevant. Yeah. Unless it's matched to a goal. Otherwise, it's just a number. Correct. So that, that's, I think that's another thing that gets uh, underestimated on the topic of audience is knowing not just who. Not just where, uh, not just how many, but but where. Because mm-hmm. if, if if like uh, when I was talking with um, Sean from Premier, uh-huh. you know he's got followers from all over North America. Yep. That doesn't biz- That doesn't good from his content consumption side of his business, where like he's he's got his little Amazon marketplace, he's got right. his YouTube channel, and da da da. But from a immediate construction and design build perspective, where he designs and builds, he doesn't design and farm out all over the place. Yeah, it doesn't really do him much good. Right. So th- these are things that I think get overlooked sometimes when people look at the social media aspect of marketing and building yeah. a brand and building demand, and they uh, they really overestimate how much needs to be done. It, yeah. It's really it doesn't take that much. Yeah. Like you're putting a lot of effort into it. Mm-hmm. But it's not like you have a, or actually, well, you tell me, but I don't think you have like a full team producing content for you. It seems like no. you're walking around, <laughs> it seems like you're walking around with a camera, talking into it. You're well spoken. You know what you're talking about. You're focused on the details. And I would. I mean, that'd be really sweet to have one day. Somebody just follow me around as I just, you know, do my daily thing. I don't know. Yeah. And they produce all the content, like Gary Vaynerchuk. Yeah. yeah. Talking about somebody well, just we, we'd around. love to be there, but uh, we're not yeah. there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, if we if we look at that, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and we're gonna talk from the context of the business overall now. 
So yeah. now we talked about a little bit of content marketing mm -hmm. and how that content marketing has had a positive effect on the demand for your business, not only in the volume, but in the quality of the demand mm -hmm. to the point where your sales activities are more focused and uh, fewer, but are generating greater return. This is a, a fantastic formula for, for success and growth in your business. Yes. How does that play into, or how do you evaluate that impact versus, uh, I'm going to take your, your words, being blessed in, in, in this situation where the market is on absolute fire right now. Correct. So is it the content that's working for you or is it just, it was going to happen anyway? What are your thoughts there? That is a fantastic question uh, because that there, it's, it'd be hard to determine that on any kind of, of data level mm -hmm. because you have a every can everybody you, this market has turned so many people into a consumer or prospective buyer that maybe weren't have before because we were we were telling people and you know for your case people are still telling people to stay in your homes and to not go out <laughs> don't go on vacation so people are like all right well fine if i if i'm not going to be able to go out and do anything i'm going to make my home my palace i'm going to put my vacation budget into my home so mm -hmm. I'm, somebody's going to tell me to stay home i'm going to be like cool and yep. so that's why techo block is in such high demand and is selling out of stuff it's why we're booking into you know however long it's why pool companies in my area are booking till 2023 it's it's mm -hmm. not so i think people you've we've created people that are seeking and I need to be seen on the other end of something that is to be sought, right? That's right. So it's really, it's, it's supply and demand really are coming to a head here. Mm -hmm. um, and that being said, there are other, in my opinion, lesser quality contractors that are still booking up work right now. So everybody is busy. If you're everybody not now you're, you're doing something seriously wrong. That's right. I wholeheartedly agree with you there. Yeah. But where I would, where I would, uh, just clarify, or I, I don't know what, what, what verb I should use right now, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, from, I think the big key with the social media content or, or, or just marketing in general, like I, we're, we're using social media and content marketing specifically, cause that's what you've been doing and you've been doing well, but any form of marketing, uh, is also to direct the right type of consumers to you. So yeah. I think it's even more critical. I would argue it's even more critical to be doing what you're doing in a period where the demand is so ridiculous because you could be spending forever on the wrong customers and because there's yeah. just so many of them. Okay. And that's, that segues right into charging for consultations or okay. pre-qualifying your client. Those are things that are not commonly discussed. Those are some okay. things that I have friends that will shun me for. You don't charge people to go and visit their house. Yeah, you do. It's your time is valuable. Like you're, you're completely diminishing the value of what you do, the experience that you have, the time that it mm -hmm. took you to get there. That was your college. So somebody's got to pay for that. If they're not going to go with you, you were compensated. And, and you know what I mean? So I, I think they're I think like, it ties into that expert uh, positioning too. Yes, absolutely. You, know, you, you wouldn't expect an expert to come consult for free. Would you? Sure. Wouldn't. So on, on one, so to get to the property, you got the, you have all this windfall of clients coming to your mm -hmm. perspective clients. Um, how do we get to the right one and how do we not waste a ton of time on the wrong one? Because if, if time is a resource that you have a limited amount of and you're wasting it all on the wrong thing, well, the right thing's not getting the proper attention. It's not getting the proper quality control and you're going to lose the right thing. So mm -hmm. I think that on the front end, asking really key questions are so crucial. Asking people, um, you know, people, I, the first phone call all the time is I'm looking for some ideas or I just want somebody to come out and kind of give me some price price points. I'm like, okay, we can take care of this right over the phone. How big of a patio are you looking to have? What kind of amenities? You want a gas fire pit? You want a wood fire pit? You want a kitchen? You want a pergola? You want a pavilion? What do you want? So we can start going, okay, you don't have a budget. I already know that. I'm not even going to ask the question. I'm going to yeah. tell you, you need to have a budget of 60 to 80 grand. And they're going to either go, okay, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Or holy smokes, nope. So that I just saved myself right. at yeah. least yeah. an hour of my time, at minimum an hour of my time, driving there, talking with them, driving back. So now I have the time freed up to spend on the right client. So mm -hmm. I, with, with the windfall of people coming in, I think 
quality control um, and, and making sure that who you're talking to, it's going to be a right fit for both of you. It's not it's not fair, not only to us, but it's not fair to them if I'm not properly qualifying them because I'm wasting their time too. I mean, let's be real. I'm not. It's true. I, we're, we're not like God over here. Like people are people and I want to, I want to have mutual respect um, on both ends of things. And I don't feel like I'm doing them a, a service if I am not asking these these questions on the, the front end of things. And I'm going to charge them for a consultation and then get out there and realize we're not going to be the right fit for them. Yeah, that's absolutely true what you just said. Yeah. I think another thing that uh, that that uh, you could add to that is the fact that you're asking that question up front. Um, it is showing that respect. Like you're you're saying, like you want to be respectful of their time, but like you're, you're demonstrating it in, immediately yeah. with the types of questions that you're asking. They're they're good quality questions that that are deserving of a, of a good, honest answer. And right. in doing so, doing so you both end up in the right place in the end. No it may not be the answers that either of you want, but right. those are the answers that you need to make the appropriate next step. Yep. Why do you think that's such a hard question to address? So many, so many contractors are reluctant to ask it early on. Mm -hmm. And so many homeowners are reluctant to answer it. Mm -hmm. there's the obvious like well people are afraid of getting screwed okay sure but is that the only reason that we don't have that conversation on that first call or even proactively in a lead intake form or on a landing page on my website or even in my social media content like wh why do we wait so late to establish this whereas if i'm shopping for a car before i even start looking online. I have seen a bunch of billboards and TV commercials and I've heard on the radio. I know how much the cars are. I know which ones I can consider. Mm -hmm. Why are we any different? Fear and guilt. Okay. I think that contractors by and large, not all, I mean, there's a lot that, that have passed this hump. Um, I think that there is an inherent fear amongst contractors that they're not gonna have another job come through. Um, and so they need to go to every single call and they, they're not gonna ask those, those provoking questions. They're not gonna tell them, hey, we charge a $75 consultation fee. They're just gonna go for everything, whether it's gonna benefit them or not. Um, and then on the guilt side, I think that there, there's this like assumption that every single person that calls you, you have to address. You have to, I mean, your, your office can address a lot of these too, but there's like, Every call that I get, if I don't, if I don't respond to this, if I don't get to this, um, I, I feel guilty. Like it's, it's my job. I have to do this. Like, again, time is limited. Your time is valuable, especially in this climate that we have right now. So I, on the contractor side, I think that's it. Um, on the consumer side, I don't know that we're not, I don't know that we're not having the conversation because it's the consumer. I think that the, the contractor, if we are the expert in our field, it's our responsibility to foster that conversation. Um, so I, I don't know that it's it's the client's fault really at all. Like I, I I don't care who I'm talking to. I don't care if it's a guy who says, I got a million dollars to spend, just come out right now. I'm still asking those questions. It does not matter. Um, so I, I have to be the one to instigate that, initiate that and guide the conversation. They don't know what, what to ask me. They some, some, don't have the proper context to ask the question. So That's I right. have to be the leader here. That, that that I love that answer. I love the way you just ended that too. You have to be the leader. You need to own that position of expert in that context. Yeah. They don't know. Yep. And anything they tell you is what they think is true. Mm -hmm. It is not the truth. It's what they believe to be true on, with the facts that they currently know. Yeah. But you hold more facts in your head that you should be sharing and articulating with them to shape to shape what they're seeing as the truth yeah. to help them understand it. I was never going to get this backyard for 30 grand. Mm -hmm. It was never going to happen. He just helped me under all this stuff. I, that guy who told me 30 is out to lunch. Yeah. I hope nobody hires that guy. Yeah. You know, like if you do a good job, I'm not saying that we're trying to put other contractors down. I'm saying we're trying yeah. to educate the, the homeowner to the point where they feel a hundred percent confident going with the contractor they hired mm -hmm. not based on just a feeling like they have enough in front of them that they're like how can you argue against this 
Yeah. The guy looks like a stud on social media. He's pointed out all these things that I see in all of his work that I didn't see in these other three guys that I was going to call. Now I decided not to. Yeah. I talked with him. He helped me understand the things that I actually want for my property, not just the things I think I want. Mm -hmm. He helped me understand why they cost what they cost. He's explained to me everything along the way. He's done everything he said he was going to do on the day and time that he said he would. For me, it's a clear choice. Yep. That's where you want to be. Yep. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's funny because we started talking about content and how it leads you to that position with the client. And we started talking about it here and it's led us to this position with, with our conversation. Right. But it all starts that first thing that you throw out into the universe, like, hi, this is who we are. Yeah. And it just, and you start building off of that. And as long as you have a clear enough feeling for and vision for what you want and what mm -hmm. your company should be and what you guys stand for, the rest uh, kind of falls into place as long as you're paying attention to it and you, mm -hmm. you, you're methodical in your approach. You're yeah. not just freewheeling on everything. For sure. Which leads me to a different topic, but something you brought up and we kind of glossed over and we come back to it. Let's go. And, and, and the segue is, is being methodical and not just freewheeling. Okay. And that is the topic of charging more. Yeah. So you just said uh, charging for consultations, charging for designs, charging appropriately, but also given the current environment, supply and demand, just basic economic principles, mm -hmm. we could be raising our prices. Have you? And if so, why? How? Like what was walk us through that if, if you uh, don't mind? Yeah, just don't ask me how much. <laughs> I'm messing with you. But even, no, but even now, but hold on, but it, it's a, it's a valid point. Even if I did ask you how much yeah. and you told me to the penny, that's irrelevant for everyone listening. For sure. Because everyone's yeah. business is going to be different. Oh yeah. And, and I know that sounds like a cop out, but that's the truth. Like for if sure. you just, if you just hired this kick-ass designer, well, yeah. that just added into your overhead that this other guy doesn't have, right. for example, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll let you. Yeah. Answer. Yeah. So yes, we we have for sure uh, raised our prices uh, across the board. Um, I I wasn't always charging consultation fees, and when I started, I wasn't charging what I am now. And even now, I still I kind of pick and choose. Like if it's a referral from a client that I loved, yeah, I'm probably going to give it the time of day, uh, right? Like it's it's my choice on who I'm going to I'm going to uh, charge for that. Um, and then in our designs, I mean, they're number one, the, these designs that we're doing these days just take so much time. They are, there's so much time Why? Um, because they're so intricate. They're so, uh, they're not just a box here or there. Like what, what my designer is doing is having, there's multiple layers to this thing. Um, and, and she's got it in the 3D environment and she's walking through it herself and then she's analyzing, does this feel right? And then goes back. I mean, there's a lot of freaking time and, and if it's taking less time, it's because there's less detail, right? The gutters are designed in the house on our 3D, mm -hmm. our 3D plans for crying out loud. Like, I mean, we, we've got it down to serious, significant detail, whereas other people don't, you know, they might not want to, or they don't have the proper resources in place for the time that it takes to do something like that. So charging at, you know, additional for designs is, is something that is a necessity because of the, the sheer amount of time and effort that it takes, but also, because if I, we have all this heavy, these heavy leads coming in and we have just our limited supply of people and time, supply and demand, baby, like you, you've got to kind of, this is the way, not, it's not just so like, oh, we're trying to make more money. No, we're, we're trying to find really who is dead serious about doing a project with us. Who wants a Creekside project rather than a landscape project? So That's charging awesome. a little bit more for a design is going to weed out some people who would have paid for a design. They may, they may not, not have gone paid, all the way, but not gone all the way. It's just a little added. It's a fine line to dance on, man. Yeah, no like doubt. You're, like you're raising the price. Yes, because you can, yeah. but more importantly, because there's so much demand that you really want to just focus your time on the super serious candidates. Yes. And that is a tricky line to walk on Yeah. when most people who are not in your head understanding that reasoning are not going to see it that way. They're okay. going to see it as like, what the heck is this? What, like, could you be any greedier? Like, right. no, all these people are at home 
And now that people need to invest in their homes is yeah. when you're raising the price. Like it could be viewed that way too. Yep. That's, I mean, I'm fine with however it's viewed. I, I got to do what's best for me and for my company. Um, there you go. And again, I mean, if I took, if we took every, even the paying client, even the paying design client, we took every single one, yeah. it's going to push us into a six to seven week delivery time. And you're going to tell that to somebody who, let's say the right client, my, my sweet spot client walks in, we tell them six, seven weeks, they're like, no, <laughs> dude, no, that's way too far out. I just wasted, I, I effectively was wasting time on some of the wrong clients. So, yeah. and, and granted, I, you know, there's people that I know there's, uh, custom, oh my gosh, uh, competitors, contractors that I know that are not charging for designs and they get a job on me, whatever. I mean, that's going to happen. Right. So I don't always know like what opportunity I'm passing up. I, I have no clue, but I do know that it, it is yeah, live your life I'm, like that, man. Uh, correct. I am funneling. I'm, I'm performing some kind of act until somebody shows me a different and better way. I'm going to do what, what is best handed to me right now. And that's funneling these clients into a position where I can go. These people clearly want us, uh, based on, on, you know, what we're charging, what they were willing to spend on us specifically. And then uh, of course, likewise, the project, I mean, the project, we're not, um, we're not bonkers more than everybody else. I think that we're really in line uh, with where the industry of the good guys uh, are. Um, mm -hmm. we're, th that's something that somebody always, you know, a client always asking, how are you price-wise with the rest of your competition? And I'm like, well, which competition, right? So um, we're, we're all, we know our costs. We know, I mean, there's, there's mm -hmm. raising labor rates these days because labor is mm -hmm. a massive issue. Um, Zero costs, labor costs. Fuel yeah. costs, equipment Fuel costs. costs, lumber. I mean, lumber is not the biggest thing for us, but you know that that stuff trickles down into everything else. I'm sure you you guys are building a a brand new uh, factory right now, and you guys Absolutely. I'm sure have some wood that goes into that, some lumber that goes. There's, in a, that. there's just you a little bit, yeah, just a little of bit of, of no, and and those costs those costs sky skyrocketed over the past year. Mm -hmm. To the point where I won't say the numbers, but there was a number forecast for the cost of this build. Yeah. And that number is significantly higher now and we're still not done. Yep. That's not because we don't know how to estimate how much things cost or how long they take. It's because the rest of the world around us is changing and yeah. everyone is changing independently of each other, yet we all depend on each other. Yep. So you have to do what you said to me when I said, well, some people might feel differently about the way that you're raising your price. You got to do what you got to do for the health of your company, mm -hmm. the preservation of your company to take care of yourself, your family, your team, the company, because all the good things that happen when you do that are good for all those people and more your clients, the community, everything, your yeah. suppliers, every company you work with benefits yep. when you're running a good company. So you have to make the decisions that make sense for your company. And to do that, you need to be, you need to have an understanding of what really matters. Yep. And, and it's not a question of being greedy, raising prices or being greedy, charging for consultations or being greedy, charging for designs. None of these things are unfair. No, because it, it, if there's, if there are people offering free consultations and free designs, that's cool. There's a market for that too. But yep. that's not the market in which you wish to operate. And Perfect. that is your freedom as an entrepreneur running your business to pick and choose who you do business with. Correct. You're just creating a system that's allowing you to pick and choose from a bigger pool. No doubt. So it's, it's, it's good, man. I wanted to ask you, like, on the crazy detailed designs, the point mm -hmm. where, like, the gutters are on the house. I think we can all agree, like, that's not necessary. <laughs> why is that? <laughs> why? 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 watches this. <laughs> why is that important? For, well, there, but there's a value. I'm sure there is. Yeah. I, I have a feeling, but I want to hear it from you. Okay. Why go to that extent? Because I can't properly give my client the virtual experience of of like how this is truly going to feel without mm -hmm. those little intimate details. Like I need them to be able to sit at the fire pit, to virtually swim in the pool and look mm -hmm. back at their house with all of its irregularities and utilities and whatever else and go, I don't know that I like the location right here or 
I don't know that I feel like this is enough space. I, I, I think that it's, I have to give them every little detail. And I, 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 you hear on all these groups all the time, we're not building houses, we're building landscapes. You're selling the whole thing. Like I, I dude, you know, the, the landscape, if executed properly, is part of the home. Yeah. So right. What's I'm your not, argument? I'm not, drawing, I'm not drawing in the homes. We're not drawing in the the, the freaking TV. The floor plan isn't there. <laughs> no, the toilets, like no. We're 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 yeah. talking about the general aesthetic on the outside of the house. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I don't know. It, I, you, you can't go to a department store and buy what you see on a mannequin. You've got to put it on yourself to make sure it works with your ugly face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're a mannequin. And, and you're, you're kind of treating somebody's landscape like a mannequin when you don't give detail to the home, in my opinion. I There's two things. I agree with you. Uh, but I think it's also it's your presentation style. And you, you gave me a clue there because you like, I need to help them see every detail because that's, that's your, your presentation, your selling style yeah. where you, you, because you're so focused on being the expert mm -hmm. and making them feel confident and the details are what matters. Cause that's what differentiates you and your company. Mm -hmm. As you sit here with your fresh haircut and your clean, crisp black polo and everything is like the details matter to your presentation. It yep. shows in your content, so it has to carry through. The story can't change now that the money started coming up in the conversation. Yeah. So that's why it matters so much to you personally. Yeah. But I would argue that it, it is extremely important. I have a similar presentation style. Like the details really matter to me too, because that that's that's what makes us different. Yeah. If I don't if I don't talk about the details, then we all look the same. Yes. It's like looking at everything with like you know dirty glasses. Like every everyone everyone's face looks the same. No one right. looks different. But when you see clearly, oh, this is I like this. Yeah, it's the same thing. So I would argue that that I, like I, I'm in in support of gutters on the house as much as it takes a little bit more time, as long as you're factoring in the time and yeah. the pricing, so that you're not just tossing that money out the window. Um, but the other thing is, I feel that because we can, we should. And what I mean by that is the technology permits us to give the client the most uh, realistic. Uh, interpretation of what could be done mm -hmm. possible to not give them that experience is to do them a disservice yeah. because they are not the professional. They are not the expert. They can, they have a tremendously difficult time visualizing what could be. Yeah. It's not because they're not gifted. They're not smart. They're not, it's not what they have done as a profession yeah. for so many years that they can just, they look, at their yard and they see they have a drainage problem in that corner we do right so it's for us to help them see through our eyes because then they can see the potential that exists for their property yeah. and if they see that potential they'll be just as excited as you are presenting to them and that's what makes that magic happen yeah. that's when all the all the things you did to build that trust are finally worth it because you're on the same page at that design presentation and to yeah. get there I would argue that those details matter. A consumer is not going to purchase what they don't know they're purchasing. I mean, mm -hmm. money, money is too valuable to people. They got kids to feed. They got kids put through college. They got medical bills. They got grocery. They got a mortgage. They're not just going to throw money at you and go just build whatever. No, they, they yeah. need to have a hand in what's in what's being designed here. They have to agree on it. Um, we, we have to match their style and then they have to go. Yeah, you know what? That does match my style. We, we're not going to install something and then go and tear it out three times at, you know, because they didn't design it. No, like this all gets taken care of in a design phase. And that's it's ugh, I, I would I more people need to hear that more people need to hear yeah. the importance of design because some people balk at it. And I, again, we go back to I don't really care. I want to focus on the people who understand, but yeah. I still do end up explaining still, myself. <laughs> yeah. But still, but it's normal. It's normal, Mike. When you think about it, like go back 10 years, go back mm -hmm. 15 years, go back 20 years. Look at what hardscaping was. Yeah. Outdoor living space. What, what was it? It was a 20 by 20 patio, one paver, one color. Maybe, maybe there's a soldier course on there. Maybe. Yeah. It, it's not the same anymore. No. You know, that used to be like, okay, 10 grand. Uh, okay, whatever. Yeah. Now it's like, yeah, I'm on the phone and I'm like, yeah, it, it, it'll, that'll be 80 grand. If, if we're not talking at least 80 grand, like I'm not even getting out of bed. Yeah. Like we're, we're at that point with certain companies and certain projects. Yeah. So, so, and even beyond that in many cases, but when you start getting into that, that more 
I'll call it air quotes here, more serious money. Sure. There's a different level of expectation that comes from that consumer too. Absolutely. And that's, that's something I feel like as an industry, we kind of underestimate because we've, we've been able to get away with doing it this simply. Like, well, why do I have to make it so complicated? The right. jobs are more complicated. The designs are more complicated. The constraints yeah. are more complicated. Yeah. It's not every project that ha that used to have a fire feature and a water feature and lighting and a decorative inlay. Oh, and this part's heated and that part's permeable. And this is a, a grill island over here. And the pergola has a retractable uh, uh, sunshade. Like yeah. this, we didn't have this stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, what what a client is going to be attracted to is directly relatable to how high that particular industry has raised their bar. So take pickup trucks. Pick oh man, pick that, that, never, that, never, yeah. they never, they never used to be anything that was like glamorous and glitter, right? They were yeah. just it was a vehicle that you could put shit in and go somewhere. That yeah. was it. Yeah. And I got a 20 inch touchscreen and a Wi Fi. Wow, man, you got, a, you got a theater inside the center console of your truck, you know, these days with a foldable gear shift. Like, what is that even? Wi Fi, yeah. you know, we're talking about, you know, self driving now. It, it's become a, a luxury item, even a status icon to, to have a really fancy truck, right? And that is because the truck industry has raised the bar. So what a client wants in the outdoor living stuff, if, if, if all their neighbors have is a bunch of square patios, what are they gonna want? They want a square patio. They're not gonna be like, I want curves here, I want accents over here, I need a gas fire pit over there. They have no context to want those things. You look at them, if you were in that time and go, okay, well, you're a little nuts, but well, I'll build whatever you want. Everybody else, I mean, the Tech Block catalogs you guys have, my social media, other people's social media, everybody's looking at the same stuff and they're going that, I want that. that yeah. They don't want no square nonsense. And there are that, there's some out there that do want that. And, and that's fine, not for you, right? And that's fine. Yeah. That, it's being able to distinguish from those people. Yeah. Not saying they're bad people, just no. they're not the people that fit your business. Maybe if you had a division that was just like pounding out 10 by 10s, bang, bang, bang. Maybe you, you want to have a plan to have that type of Dude, customer. I would. There's better money in that than the big ones anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Could, debatable. Could yeah. But that, you know, that's, I, I think that's, that's the, the most important thing. I don't remember if I've ever said it on the show, actually, like during recording. But yeah. my dad always says, well, he said and says this, but he's like, the, the, the sun shines for everyone. Huh. Like a, a, in any industry, in any market, like everyone can make it. Yeah. You just got to find your own little corner that, that works for you and, and really yeah. own that space. Yes. And, and through your content and through your designs and through your attention to detail and, and your way of explaining and helping people understand, all these things together creates your own little niche that works for your geographical area yep you know for every creekside outdoor living in uh was it crown point again crown point <laughs> indiana chicago let's just call it chicago yeah in, in chicago you know yeah. there, there's someone like you in montreal there's someone yeah. like you in ottawa in toronto and whatever and that's fine because yeah. you guys are all in different areas and i think yeah. that's that's what's cool because even now with the this is the 26th episode of the show yep we probably had about 20 contractors on so far out of mm -hmm. the 20, every one of them is doing it a little differently and it just works Yes, because it can. Yeah. You just got to own it and, and go for it. And, and I like, I like the way that you're doing it. Cause it, it, it's, well, I mean, clearly I'm excited about it. <laughs> We've been talking for like an hour about it, <laughs> but I, I just, I, I like the way that it's, it's still pretty simple. Yeah. At its core, it's, it's, Elevated designs, yeah. emphasis on details, details that most people aren't aware of. Share people, share with people those details and why they're so cool and why they matter so much. And you don't even need to be able to explain the details of your your, your cuts on a 45 matching up perfectly. There, there is no functional benefit. Yeah. But the fact that you're so excited about it. Yeah. Clearly this matters. Right. I don't know why this guy's so excited about that, but I, next time I look, I'm going to look at the corners. And if I see someone didn't cut the corners like that, I'm going to judge them. That's what, that's <laughs> what, 
I don't it, in, yeah. It, it, yeah, but inadvertently that that's what's happening. So you're shaping the perception of consumers yeah. to match what you bring to the table. Yep. And then you just deliver on that. The rest just is running a hardscape business, but yeah. you create an identity where those things matter more. And if you care about those things, you're willing to pay a little bit more to get the best. That's mm -hmm. all you're trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think by and large too, it's just an emphasis on like, observing people and reading people and respecting and honoring people like not thinking of your business as such a machine and it is but like your machine is people run by people right? and yep. you are attracting people to your business to hire you um you're you're talking with vendors who are people so like I feel like that is just a fundamental that's kind of lost too. I don't know how we how I segue into that. That's well, it's because you're, you're, you're like telling they, a story. Yeah, they call just, they call their their clients like I gotta leave, gotta leave, gotta leave, and I'm just I'm looking at the thing like okay, who's the person that I'm gonna talk to today? Like, what are they about? Like, do they have kids? Do they whatever? Because that's I mean those are relevant questions that are gonna affect the design. Um, but yeah, man, I, I it's just I remember. I remember one time I was in the Indiana State House. It's a, a government facility. And I remember the biggest takeaway that I had was that it was run. I didn't see a machine anywhere. Like I just expected the, the government, the big bad government to be big like computers. And yeah, right. A big, and a big server computer. room. There wasn't a yeah. computer inside. It was just people with like papers and stuff. And it was just like it was run on thoughts and ideas and people communicating ideas to other people. Um, and so that's really, I mean, social media, social media media like you you are creating content like on a platform to be social and to communicate things to other people um how are those people going to respond and, and and receive this um so yeah I, it's it's really it's creating a lot of relationships it's trying to create a lot of win-win relationships um mm -hmm. both in your in your in your house and outside of your house mm -hmm. uh, and there's times that man we Obviously, we're posting the highlight reel all the time, right? I'm posting the highlight reel of this business. I ain't telling you some of the stuff that happened today and yesterday, you know? Yeah. Like, there's there's some real stuff that like is tough, and there's yeah. some there's some things sometimes that we mess up. Um, so I, usually it's me. I usually messing something up, or it's something that somebody else did. And like, how do we recover from that? Um, are we going to try to cover it up and not tell the client? Um, you know what I mean? I, it's, it's looking at everything is like, you are dealing with people. So how do we yeah. best respect people? How do we best honor people? Um, and, uh, I, I think that is, that is what people see. Um, and especially when, when somebody refers another person, they are, yeah, they're going to talk about, uh, how great of a job they did, but yeah, this guy never answered his phone. Like he was terrible to mm -hmm. talk to, like, that's mm -hmm. the, but that's their takeaway. Yeah. So like, I want somebody's like takeaway to be like, they had a fantastic experience with us. Like you, anybody can mess and everybody does mess something up, but like, how do you recover from that? And how do you make it right? Uh, because you're, you're a person dealing with a person. So. Mm -hmm. But I, I think we won't get into uh, to all, all that problem solving stuff uh, on this episode, but I think that uh, that's, a, that's a good final thought in terms of, it's just it's it's just people yeah it's you know that it's a customer that it's a member of your team that it's mm -hmm. someone from a vendor or someone from the government it, it does yeah. at the end of the day people are just people you should be honest you should treat them with respect and you should just look at how can you bring value to them mm -hmm. and if you are doing that typically if the conversation is set up in the right context, you'll get value in return. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, that's what you're trying to do with your social media content. I think if we really like come back to that, and I don't want people to, uh, cause I know like we end up talking about social media content and Instagram, mm -hmm. probably 20, 25% of the episodes it comes up yeah. and it's cause it's the thing that's out there, but at the same yeah. time, it's such a freaking easy opportunity. Mm -hmm. to create a clear identity for your business and to create demand for your business and to give your team something to be proud of that they can see outside of just work hours. Like mm -hmm. it's just, it's this constant thing that like, how can you not talk about it? Yeah. And the simplest way to capitalize on it is recognizing it's not that complicated. 
Who's on social media? People. How yeah. do you normally talk to people yeah. like this? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Point the camera at your face and do the same thing. Yeah. Is it that comp? It's not that complicated. You don't need fancy video editing software. You don't need yeah. to spend a thousand dollars on drones and this and that and here's, the other thing. Here, here. Show the things that you get excited about clearly, professionally. Like you don't, you know, just think, think how you would talk. Like you're talking to a client and you're showing people, but just walk them through some of the stuff like you're doing yeah. and you'll see the impact. You saw it in a matter of weeks. Yeah. Here's, here's the biggest thing that's just burning on my mind as you say that, right? Yeah. So part, part of our final thought here is it's how we are ascertaining value to other people. Okay. Mm. So there, there are, the, the Bible tells us that God created all man in his image all and we are over here devaluing one and elevating another so i think that parts of our conversation was there are certain contractors who are afraid to enter into certain conversations with certain clients and i think that they're putting that client on a pedestal because they're going mm -hmm. well that client's not going to like that question um or uh, i can't charge that to that particular client because they might not whatever yeah. so and you're going to kind of prejudge your own content based on how you are valuing the perception yeah. of somebody yeah. else uh, that yes. is viewing your content. And we are also, some some of the reasons that certain contractors fail is because they have too little value associated with their team. They don't place their team on an equal level. So I feel like the real, the real good, when we're talking about people to people, like all we are, all I am is a resource connector. Man, I am, I am not a, a naturally gifted landscaper by any means. All I am and all I'm good at is being a resource connector. I go find the right people. I go find the people that need these people and we connect yeah. them. And, if, and if, I, if I don't have a proper perspective and view on the value of humans and people, I'm going to lose. But if I keep, be able to connect anything. Clear, I keep that in clear and plain sight that yeah. these people that I'm talking, the people that I'm talking to on social media are just like me. I'm going to talk to them normal. If I am viewing the people who work for me, they're just like me. I'm not going to belittle them. I'm going to raise them up. I'm going to want to love on them. I'm going to want to hear their issues and their problems. Yeah. And I'm going to want, I want to I want to talk about it. I want to make this a, a, a family atmosphere. And the byproduct of that is they're going to want to stay and work here. So I, I feel like when you have just that core value in place, you can't lose. I want to add something. There's nothing cheers. to add to that. Yeah. Cheers, man. That's, there's nothing to add to that. Yeah, that that's that's put so beautifully, and it, it's there's there's literally nothing else I could say that wouldn't just be repeating what you said. That's perfect, perfectly said. It, it's so true. You know, I'll give an example, kind of similar, kind of different, but just you know, I guess you could almost say from a different angle, it's like putting 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 your ego aside, putting your, your fear aside, but you know, like that fear and guilt thing you're saying, just put all those things aside and just realize like, what, what do I need to, what do I need to get out of this interaction right now? Yeah. And am I getting this? You know, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the story. So like one of the, th I've learned a lot. I've, I've worked at Taco Block for, for going on 16 years now mm -hmm. and, and where I am now, I report directly to the owners and I talk oh. with them. Charles and, and his wife Nancy, and uh, I'm talking with them all the time, and, and and very very fortunate to be in that position because I can see the the things that they get exposed to as as owners and entrepreneurs and people who have built this business over 30 years and see all the challenges and the evolution and things they've learned, and and one of the things that that I always admired about Charles specifically is. He's very blunt. He's very direct, hmm. not in a rude or, or disrespectful way, but just like he gets to the point yeah. and he's not shy about it. So like we'll be having meetings where, we're, you know, we're talking with these consultants and they're talking about this big, complicated thing. And you have like people in the in the meeting, like around the table and they're nodding like, yeah, yeah, just going along with what the guy's saying. And he's like, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't understand at all what we're talking about here. And then you start to see the other people start to go like, yeah, yeah, I had a question about that you detail. Know, you know, no one knew. No one knew what the hell this guy was talking about. Yeah. But 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 Charles would go straight to the point and just be like, look, for me to get the most out of this conversation, I need to understand this point. Can you explain it again? Yeah. And and, and I think that that's, that's a good example of what you're saying where it's like, 
I'm not afraid of embarrassing myself. I'm not afraid of embarrassing you. I'm not, that's not my intention at all. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand and help us both get on the same page so yeah. we can get the most of our relationship. And yeah. it's the same thing with what you're saying. If you put the client up here, you're never going to get the same thing out of the relationship because you feel like you owe everything to them. Yeah. And the opposite is true too. And it's, it's, Yes, we're fortunate to have clients. Yeah. Yes, we have to do what we can to take care of them because they are the ones that put food on the table. But you're still the expert. You're still the professional. You're still making the rules of, of the engagement because that is your role. And you right. can't let that part go. Mm -hmm. You can't ignore that part. That's, okay. that's, that's your role in that relationship. They need you to be like that. Correct. You can't be a pushover because then they don't get what they need in the end. They end up with subpar work. Yeah. That, that won't last or whatever, or they won't have a company to call later when they want to do it because you've gone out of business because you accepted that mediocrity was imposed by yeah. outside people. You know, yeah. it, it's well, it's and, and in val val trying to assess value uh, to a consumer and to your people. I think there's also a space where you need to assess the value of yourself. And I mm. feel like there's a very real way that you disrespect yourself in your own time uh, when you short sell your stuff in, in areas like what you're talking about. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. We could start a whole other episode right now, but I think we'll, <laughs> I, I, I think we'll wrap it up there for today. Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, th this was fun. I uh, Same, man. I always like this. Honestly, like uh, just for the listeners, because I'm sure you've heard me say it a couple times now, but quite a few of these calls have been like the first real conversation with the guests. Like we exchange messages on Instagram or whatever, but first time talking, I guess, face to face as much as we are right yeah, now. Right. But uh, I'm always amazed with how incredibly intelligent and diverse the people in this industry are yeah and uh honestly like uh, you're talking about about uh feeling blessed like, I, I feel blessed that i have this platform that this this is what i get paid to do is have these conversations and yeah. talk with people like you and just highlight how awesome this whole thing is yeah and and just really highlight how we're all building it together yeah. and that that's even more rewarding than yeah. seeing like the actual projects but seeing how we're transforming not just an industry, but the way the way that the world looks at their home and how they yeah. use their home. And we're yeah. doing that. Yeah. And these conversations just help us do it better. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, we're super creating fun. moments for other people. Like how like what can I what else can I be doing? Manufacturing a tire in a warehouse or something? I oh, I'm, I'm no, helping no. get the A to B. I, no, I, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll away from my computer for a second just to show this. This is uh, for people watching on, on hardscaper.com or on YouTube. But these are the backpacks that we gave out at, yeah. uh, at Showcase last year. And it says on them, we live to create. It says on the t-shirts too. And that, that, like, that's what that's about. Yes. Is we, we honestly believe we're creating something greater with everyone as a yeah. community. And that's, that's like these conversations just confirmed that for me. So thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Dude, thanks for having me on. This is really cool. I love what you guys are, uh, are doing for the industry and uh, creating educational content. Like you, people like you are um, what elevate people like me. Um, so props to you guys. Yeah. You doing what you do gives us the fuel to do it. So it's a big. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. A little more fast. All right. Yeah. One, one wash, one, one, one hand washes the other. Yeah. Right? Yep. All right, Mike, thank you very much. And uh, for everyone listening, I hope you uh, got a lot out of this episode. Uh, this is one I really think is worth a re-listen and a re-listen and re-listen because we touched a lot of stuff, but there's a lot of good mindset stuff in here too. Um, but uh, Mike, thanks. You want, thank you once again. And uh, for everyone else, till next time, we'll uh, see you next week. Till then, work hard and pave harder. Peace out.